What's up guys, Lifting here. I've been playing tons of Arcage Unchained recently, and while I greatly enjoy the game, I also have to admit that it can be very confusing when first starting out. Because of that, I've compiled 30 tips divided into three separate videos that hopefully will help you get a better understanding of the game. This video covers the first 10 tips. Once I release the next two videos in the series, you can find a link to those in the description below. If you haven't already, but are considering purchasing Arcage Unchained, then please consider using my link in the description to obtain it. It will at no extra cost to you, help me continue doing what I do. So thank you very much. These are the first 10 tips I wish I knew before I started Arcage Unchained. Tip number one, hereafter stones are used to create portals to teleport to and from different zones and continents in Arcage Unchained. But it can be rather expensive. It will save you a lot of gold to buy the hereafter stones from the auction house instead of the general merchant. Tip number two. Unlike in the first iterations of Arcage, later versions including the new Arcage Unchained greatly incentivizes reaching max level to get the most out of the game. The most efficient way of achieving this is to generally ignore any yellow quests for the first 30 levels and only focus on the green story missions as these will grant you a ton of experience. The only yellow quests you should be concerned about before level 30 are your mount, glider and battle pet quests which are indicated as shallow quests. Then once you reach level 30, you're going to want to pick up every yellow quest your green quest leads to and complete them alongside the story mission. That's when the real questing grind begins. At this point in time, the green quests will no longer be vastly superior to your yellow quests and that's why you're starting to do the other ones too. You'll also want to make sure to pick up and complete any blue salt quests you encounter along the path these are indicated by having a green leaf as a quest marker and these are important as they will help you progress your vocation skills. At level 45 it is possible to go to Aegis Island to farm monsters. A single monster kill here can net you anywhere between 3000 to 12000 experience per kill. Alternatively you can simply follow the story progression and reach level 55 that way. Tip number 3. When questing, it is often possible to earn extra gold from quests by overachieving. This will not grant you extra experience, however, but there are certain situations where killing extra mobs or looting specific targets may trigger a hidden quest that will grant you extra experience and gold. It's also possible to turn in certain quests early if you're in a rush. Tip number four. When first starting out, you will soon after completing a few quests receive a loot crate containing your explorer's gear set. This may at first not seem like anything special, but this gear can be upgraded and used all the way up to and for endgame content. We plan on releasing a video showing you how to optimally upgrade your gear, but in short terms what you want to do is to use the synthesized materials you receive as quest rewards to upgrade your explorer's gear. Then use the awakening scrolls to rank it up once you get them and then resynthesize the gear once more. Repeating this process will eventually net you the endgame Hiram gear. Tip number 5. Inventory management can be a pain in the ass in Arcage Unchained. Especially if you tend to hold on to every single item that drops. Generally speaking, don't be afraid to vendor common items you don't necessarily see a need for, as these can typically be acquired anyway in much larger quantities later on if you actually need them. If you're uncertain about an item's value and feel reluctant to simply vendor it, you can also press Ctrl and right click an item in your inventory to see its current value on the auction house before making the decision to keep it or not. Typically it is worth saving crafting materials such as planes, logs, rocks and ore as these are useful in most crafts. And if you want to save the inventory space, you can simply store them in your warehouse. If you don't really have an apparent use for them, you can also just put them on the auction house. A quick way to reach the auction house even when you're out in the wilds is to press P on the keyboard. This will open your auction house and you can use it from here. Tip number 6. How many times have you been running around looking for a blacksmith to repair your gear? If the answer is more than one time, then you have done it too much. There is a much easier solution to this. Just open your inventory and click the repair button to fix your broken gear. 
Tip number 7. You don't have much to fear in terms of world PvP before level 33, but once you start questing in some of these zones, you need to start paying attention to the state they're in. For instance, during peace periods, you can continue to quest without the fear of getting ganked, as PvP for that zone is disabled. When the zone enters tension, PvP becomes enabled, but will provide no rewards for the attackers and thus offer little incentive to gank you. However, once the zone enters conflict and war, both experience and honor points will be awarded for killing players of the opposing faction. And that means it suddenly becomes much more dangerous to quest in these zones, as your enemies will want to gank you if possible. It's worth knowing, however, that if there is a 10 or more of a level difference between the attacker and the target, the lower level player receives a damage reduction buff to try and even out the playing field, but only when the zone is in tension or conflict mode. This equalizer buff is not enabled during war mode. Speaking from experience, it is generally best to avoid zones such as Halcyona and Hellswarm during conflict and war, as these are heavily populated zones that often gets raided by the enemy faction, and if you're getting constantly ganked while trying to quest, you're obviously not going to get very far. And since my experience so far has been limited to playing as the Nguyen Alliance faction, I would like to ask you guys who play on the opposing faction, which zones you in general try to stay clear from during these war periods. Which ones are the most dangerous? Please let us know in the comments. Thanks. Tip number 8 is also related to the PvP state of the zones, as in what to do with your time when these zones are too dangerous to question. Since this is a sandbox game, there are obviously lots of different things to consider and to do, but if we focus on the idea of wanting to earn experience so you can continue leveling, I have a few recommendations for you. One of these is to burn your labor points to receive experience. This can include something as simple as running around mining, logging, harvesting, planting and fishing, as all of these tasks consume labor points and in return reward you with experience for doing so. You can then take this further by processing the items you have found into materials and either keep them for yourself or sell them on the auction house. For instance, if you've been spending some of your labor on mining, all of that ore you have collected can then in turn be processed into stone bricks, iron ingots and so forth. This also requires labor to do, but will also grant you experience per each item you process. One of my personal favorites of burning labor is to fish, as it simply requires you to stand by the water equip your fishing rod and then use the auto fishing ability. This is one of the most simple ways of converting your labor to experience points. The only downside to this is that it requires worm bait that you will have to either grow yourself or purchase from the auction house. Another upside to this, be it mining, fishing or harvesting, is that by using your professions or vocation skills as they are called, is that they will rank up to as you do so. Now, we plan on releasing a couple of videos of the best areas to fish, lock and mine in the coming days. If that has your interest, then don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon to be notified. And here's another question for you guys. What is your preferred way of burning labor for experience when not questing? Please let me know in the comments. Tip number 9. Don't forget to equip your mount and battle pet with gear. Like your character, your mount and battle pet can equip gear that further improves their strength. By talking to the stable hand and browsing their shop, you will be presented with various upgrades for both the mount and battle pet. Your battle pet can even receive a gear set that similarly to your own can be infused and upgraded to improve its stats. However, until it reaches level 55, it's generally fine to just stick with the regular gear upgrades as these are much cheaper and still provide a significant upgrade to its stats. It's also worth knowing that your mounts and battle pet does not receive experience from quest rewards only from enemies killed, and I believe mounts may also receive some experience from simply traveling. But the point here is to make sure that you keep them out at any time possible until they reach max level. Another thing is to remember to upgrade your starter experimental glider as this will greatly improve its hang time, speed and granted extra abilities. I recently released a video on how to easily do this and you can find a link to it in the description below if you are interested. Finally, this video's tip number 10 concerns the game settings and some of the functionality this provides, as there are a few settings that I believe makes for a better experience overall. So, 
First, while it can be nice to see the title, guild and name of other players, it seems unnecessary to have that information shown above yourself. We can turn this off by going to the name info settings and untick the display my info box for a slightly cleaner UI. Then again, if you are having trouble remembering who you are, then maybe you should keep it on. To see your specific life and mana numbers, you can go to the game info and check the show health and mana stats. You can also enable targets cast bar to make it easier for you to interrupt casts at the right time. If you want to be able to see the specific target that your target is targeting, then the show target of targets cast bar can also be a very useful feature to have enabled. If you're trying to tweak your graphic settings, you can also take the view frame rate option to give you a better insight into what works and what doesn't by having it displayed up in the right corner. And if you then scroll all the way down to the bottom of the game info section, you'll be able to change the distance of how far the game can show quest indicators on your map. By setting this to unlimited, you'll be able to tell if there's a quest you have yet to complete by having it show up as an exclamation mark on your map. A little warning here though, for some reason this feature also occasionally show quests that are unavailable to you. From what I've been able to gather, this is a bug, but in either case try playing around with it to see if it's to your liking. Under the functionality tab, I'd first of all recommend disabling the double tap to dash and instead bind that ability to a hotkey to give you a better control over the skill. But more importantly, enable the skill deployment location option. What this does is make skills that normally require you to place it in a location instead skip that step and deploy or activate it directly at where your mouse cursor is. This saves you the step of clicking and can be a welcome time saver in intense PvP encounters. A few other personal preferences of mine is to untick the quest dialog close-ups to avoid the cutscene-ish effect when interacting with quest NPCs. I also occasionally enable the quest direction arrows, which are the ones you can see at my feet. These reference the quest shown in the quest log and points towards the area I need to go. This is only a feature that makes sense if you don't have a ton of quests enabled at the same time though. If you want to further declutter your UI, I also recommend hiding the optimizer button in case you don't need it that is. And finally, by scrolling a bit further down, you can also disable the chat profanity filter. This filter is rather aggressive and can make communicating a little hard sometimes. So if that's to your preference, you can disable it here. Now, there are a few more UI settings and tweaks I wish to share with you, but those will be saved for the next video in the series. And with that said, this concludes episode 1 in the ArcH Beginner's Tip video series. If you have any tips you wish to share yourself, then please do so in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe for much more ArcH Unchained content in the following weeks. And if you liked the video, please consider smashing that like button. A huge thanks to my patrons for your support. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd?